Hey Sarah, how's it going? Hi, I'm uh, good. Everyone, this is Sarah Smith. She's going to be our host today for our CT division. Hi, hi, how are you doing? I'm good. So I'm going to show you guys around. This is one of our CT rooms. Uh, we're just going to talk about everything that's in here. And so this is obviously our CT scanner. This is where we take all the pictures for you guys. Um, table moves in and out of our donut. That's what we refer to this as a donut. It's not long like a tunnel. It's like an MRI. And then looking around the room, this is lead. This is what anyone who's in the room that's not getting their pictures taken that they wear goes on the front of them. You may have had something like this when you've gone to the dentist before and they lay that over you before you get your x-rays. Uh, this is called a slide board. We use this on patients typically when they're coming from a bed or a stretcher. It's a smoother transition onto our CT table. Um, this I don't have it plugged in right now, but this is called a light show. We plug it in, we use it on patients who are younger that might be a little more nervous about getting their pictures taken and, and also babies, because it projects a light uh, display up onto our camera here and kind of takes away the scariness of it all. Uh, this is where we typically have our parents take a seat while we take their child's pictures. Parents are also always welcome to stand up next to their child, hold their hands, talk to them while we're taking their pictures. Coming over this way, this is where we have all of our supplies and linens and whatnot. This is called an injector. We often use this to give contrast for the patient's exam. It goes through an IV and it pushes it at a steady rate and so that we can get the best pictures. This is for anesthesia. So some of our patients can't get the pictures done um, on their own, meaning they might need to have their breath held and they're a baby, or they might just not be willing to hold still. So this is just um, our anesthesia department's machine and it helps us get really good pictures by helping them go under anesthesia. Um, but that's pretty much our room here. <laughs> These up top hook up to the anesthesia machine and it helps get oxygen and other gases to um, the machine which then goes to your child. This is just um, an outlet. <laughs> we have lots of patients that come down from the floors that need a quick and easy plug-in. So, Sometimes it looks like it's hanging over top of you, but it's not gonna go anywhere. It's anchored to the ceiling. Okay, so now we're inside our control room. This is just off of the scanner room. This is where the CT tech goes and any medical staff. We're not allowed to let family members back here because we do have other patient information back here that we wanna keep private. So this is our scanner. This is where we would set up the pictures on and then the pictures that we take show up here. This is our injector. That's connected to the one that's in the room. This helps us prescribe how fast we want the contrast to go in and how much. And then this is our workstation where we track out all of our information and send the pictures to our doctor and your doctor. Okay, Sarah. Yes. Are you ready to answer some questions from our patients and families? Of course. Okay, first one is, is the CT scanner loud? Um, not really. I don't know if you can hear it in the background behind me, but it's kind of a quiet hum. We liken it to a, um, a washer dryer type thing. It's definitely not like an MRI. It doesn't clank, it doesn't beep. It just has this constant hum. Is it okay if I bring my cell phone, tablet, computer in the room? Yes. This is not like a magnet, which is like MRI, where you can't bring anything metal inside. You're free to bring that in. It's not going to do anything to your cell phone. Uh, what different types of contrast are there, and why do I need it? 
So depending on what your doctor is looking for, we have a couple different options of contrast. Sometimes we don't need contrast at all, but if we do, there are a couple different types. There's some that we put through an IV that helps us see inside your blood vessels. So wherever a vein is inside your body, when we put the contrast in, that's going to show very bright white on our pictures. And that's going to help us see different areas because without contrast, sometimes the um, organs inside your body is just a gray color. And so the contrast helps to differentiate between that kind of things. And then we also have contrast that you can drink that can go through a G or J tube if you have one. So the contrast that you drink helps us see inside your intestines where all your food goes and everything. And so both of those types of contrast can be very beneficial for the radiologist depending on what your doctor is looking for. And Sarah, uh, how long will the CT take? It depends on what your doctor wants. But on average, you're in here for about 10 minutes. There are some exams that would take longer, especially if we have to put an IV in, if we might have to hook monitors up to you. But typically, it's about 10 minutes start to finish. Now, that being said, the pictures are typically a second to 10 seconds long. But it's the setting up because we take several pictures. We take one and then we set everything up and then we take your real pictures. So start to finish 10, but the actual pictures where you really need to hold still is just a couple. Can anyone stay in with me while I get my pictures taken? Yes, you can have family members stay in here. Uh, we typically like to limit it to two people if you don't need to stay in the room, then we just suggest you step out in the hallway. Um, we have lead aprons that anybody who stays in the room can, uh, can wear. And if you're pregnant, we can't have you stay in. And if you're under 18, we can't have you stay in. So, um... Why do parents or caregivers have to wear an, a lead apron? So, that is this. It goes on the front of you. And this helps block radiation from the patient. So, when we take pictures, it uses radiation. And it goes into the patient and helps produce an image. But when that radiation goes into the patient, it has to come out, so it just goes out into the room. And then that's why anyone who stays in here has to wear lead, because they're not getting their picture taken. We also don't put lead on the patient, because say we're taking a picture of their head. The x-rays are going inside their head, and then it just comes out. It doesn't go out and then go back down to their abdomen or any other part of their body. It's just going out into the room. If we put lead on an area that we're taking a picture of, it actually ruins the pictures. So, there you have it. <laughs> okay, coming from a parent, why does my child need sedation or anesthesia? So sometimes we can't get the pictures done, whether they can't hold still, they're scared, maybe the exam is too long, too involved. And sometimes we need you to hold your breath. We're taking a picture of your chest. We need you to hold your breath a couple times, and it's about five seconds each breath hold. So that's kind of impossible for a one-year-old to do. So that's why we would need anesthesia. Um, and then, like we said, if, if, if your child is moving on the pictures, we're not gonna get a good picture inside. So if you think about, you're taking a picture with your camera, and your child's running across the screen, it's gonna be blurry, right? So that's what it looks like on the inside when we take a picture and it's blurry. And Sarah, thank you for taking your precious time to get us introduced to CT. I uh, hope you have a happy day. Thank you, you too.